Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so I guess some people have some problems with the issue of taqlid and people making taqlid of a madhab, etc. So just hear me out. Even if it was allowed, I'm not saying that it's allowed to, you know, pick and choose rulings from different madhabs. I would not do it. I would just adhere to one madhab. Why? Because it's much easier. You know, I have a life and I'm not prepared to dedicate like my whole, like 100% of my time to derive rulings and, you know, look at the, the, the dalil, etc. So, when a lot of people say that, oh, we should look at the dalil, the dalil, there are so many things we do in our daily lives that, like, have to do with Islam. For example, we just take the Salah. I don't think it's reasonable to expect, uh, you know, expect that people should, you know, every single movement in Salah and every single thing you say, that you should check every single hadith, every single ayah in the Quran that has to do with that. And then you have to check what, what like, scholars have commented upon this. Why don't you just stick to one madhab you take what the madhab says because we all know the madhabs they are correct they are they have accepted uh, opinions the ahl sunnah wal jamaah so why why would you start going and it's like oh where should i keep my hands so the hanafi madhab says that you should keep your hands below the navel now a lot of people go crying oh but there is no proof for this well yes there is proof there is a hadith about this and then, oh, well, we have stronger proof, we have stronger proof. Okay, then I have to start looking at all, this, all the hadith that has to do with where should I place my hands. Then I have to look at what every single muhaddith has commented on this hadith. What will they say? What is the classification of this hadith? Someone might classify this as weak. Someone might classify this as strong. Uh, how do I know? Do, then I have to look at the, the imam, like the, the mujtahid imam, for example, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi. Like, I, I look at the, uh, the chain of narration, like where did it become weak, is the person actually after Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi in the chain, then the hadith, it might have been sahih when it came to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi but it became daif after him, because there is this one not so good narrator. All these things. If you don't want to make taqlid, you know, MashaAllah, go and study for 20 years and then you can, you know, become mujtahid mutlaq or whatever. But before that, you know, we, everyone, every single person is not supposed to be a scholar. We are not supposed to derive rulings. We have the ulama, they do these things and we rely on the ulama. We need blacksmiths, maybe not blacksmiths anymore. We need, you know, airplane drivers, we need cleaners, we need engineers, we need bankers, we need everything. We can't all try to be scholars, so we let the scholars do their job and we do our ours. And let me just say, looking at the history of Islamic scholarship, looking at, first, for example, at the Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, if he's not good enough to start deriving rulings uh, on himself, I'm nowhere near to even think about the rugby rulings on myself. What's his name? Uh, Allama Anwar Shah uh, Kashmiri. He is not good enough to, you know, derive rulings upon himself. I'm not even near that, okay? Imam Nawawi, Muqallid of the Shafi Madhab. You know, the list can go on and on and on. Oh, who am I? I'm 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 Fredo from YouTube. I make videos at times. I I have a, 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 a one bookshelf or two bookshelves filled with Islamic books, and now I think I'm a scholar because I'm I'm supposed to know something that maybe my Muslim neighbor because they don't like they haven't even read one Islamic book. So now I'm just going to be a scholar and I'm going to derive rulings on myself because because brother we have this Sahih in, we have this Hadith in Sahih Bukhari. I mean, stop, stop acting like you people aren't making taqlid. Some people, you are always making taqlid of something. For example, the hadith. How do you know it's sahih? 
you're making taqlid or you're, you're relying on this some hadith that he uh, said that this hadith is sahih you're, you're not you know you're not looking yourself into it so where, where should where should this you know reliance stop because it seems that it's only that we, we can't accept just the madhabs so why should we stop there why, why should we you know accept the you know the hadithi the you know all these people we should just look at everything ourselves and then that's all we do that's all we do I'm going to provide links in the the description which is down below I guess now and uh, I'm going to basically I'm going to put there the book that Mufti Taki Usmani wrote which is the legal status of following a madhab it's about 70 pages I suggest that every single person that watches this video would read it even though you won't but I would say that you should then I'm going to post other uh, articles about understanding the madhabs you know why we have to follow the madhabs I'm going to post a fatwa on that we have to follow the madhabs look at the links look at the links I mean you're not a scholar I'm not a scholar make the clean okay make the clean